Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Well, it is finally here, garden planting day. We spent yesterday cleaning up the garden and putting down any of the weed fabric that needed to go back down. Uh, it was a warm day. I got a little bit too much sun yesterday and so today I'm covering up a little bit more. But it was a really great day and it set us up for having a great planting day today. But before we can get right into planting, there are a few last minute things that we need to do this morning. We have one last trellis to put up out here in the garden and then we have a floating row cover to put over our uh, early spring plants, our brassicas. I know that I mentioned to you guys that we had planned to uh, plant a whole row of brassicas out here in the garden, but we never brought you along to show you that we actually did do that. Uh, they're doing really well. Uh, we didn't put the floating row cover on early because of all the wind so far so pretty good without bugs but we're going right. to put it on there uh, just to make sure that as the the veggies are maturing that they don't get overtaken by uh, the caterpillars and the the worms so we're going to do that today so those are the first two things that we need to accomplish then we're going to bring you guys along row by row as we get the garden planted now remember that this year we're doing half of our gardening inside of our high tunnel those plants have already been in for gosh going on six weeks now yeah, definitely more than a month right so and they're doing well we did a tour in there with you guys just last week so even though we're still planting a pretty big garden out here this isn't the full story the other half <laughs> is in the greenhouse all right we've got a lot of work to accomplish it's going to be a pretty warm day here it's today it's going to be beautiful though yeah it's going to be oh about 80 degrees there's a little bit of cloud which is nice a little bit of a breeze yeah. which is beautiful so we've got a lot of work to accomplish. We're hoping to get it all done today because tomorrow some rain moves back in and that will be a great start for all of That's these plants right. and seeds. Yes. This year in the garden, we're doing something a little bit different for green beans. Instead of doing our normal bush green beans, the contender green beans that we normally grow, we're trying a pole bean this year, which is why we need to put this trellis up in our bean row. This year we're gonna try actually a purple bean that, uh, I think will be easy to pick because we'll be able to see the pods nicely. We'll go over the variety and everything later when we get to actually planting, but that's why we're putting this trellis up in our bean row. Now last year we actually had two rows for beans as well. We, well, we had one for green beans and one for uh, soybeans, edamame. This year we're not going to be doing those because they really didn't do well for us. So we're going to be covering the holes up in the other row, basically for the trellis. All we're using is two cattle panels and T-posts. So this will be a 32 foot row of the green beans. Well, we got that trellis all taken care of. That's one good job done. Uh, now we're gonna move on to putting the floating row cover over this um, row of our brassicas. I just wanna quickly show you how well they're doing. Uh, we have broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage in this row. Uh, you can see that the broccoli is starting to put on a small head here. It's not gonna get a giant head like some of the broccolis. I haven't had success with that kind of broccoli, uh, but this variety of broccoli, once I take that main head off, it will start making little sprouts all over the broccoli plant and I'll be able to just harvest lots of little heads. So I actually am looking forward to that and I planted these on purpose because of that. They're doing really well. We've got some cabbage here that is doing really well. It's starting to put on heads. So I imagine actually in the next couple of weeks that I'll be able to harvest all of this cabbage. We have very minimal damage so far, uh, which I'm very happy about. There are only two of the cabbages that look like they've had any damage at all from either a rogue chicken that got in here or some caterpillars. Um, and back here, <clears throat> we have two different kinds of cauliflower uh, that we have planted here. Uh, they haven't really started to put on their heads yet. Uh, but I think that they will soon. Nope, nothing yet. So we are gonna get this covered with a row cover, which is insect protection. It will keep out any of the moths that will lay their eggs on any of these, and the eggs will hatch into caterpillars or worms, which will eat our plants. Uh, so we're gonna get that on there right now, and then we'll get started planting. For our floating row covers, we're using uh, actually the same floating row covers that we use in the greenhouse over the winter. Uh, we've showed you guys this before. It's just a lightweight material. And then we have these uh, metal 
uh, piece, pieces of metal that we use as hoops. You can make these out of what's called high tensile chain link fence tension wire. Um, you can buy that at Home Depot or Lowe's and then just cut it. These are six foot lengths. And what we do is we like our floating row covers to be about three feet across. This floating row cover is six feet wide. So what we'll do is we'll put one of these hoops. So one nice thing about using the weed fabric is you got these lines that tell you distance. So we'll put that in about six inches and then we'll hoop it over three feet away. And we'll put that side in about six inches. And then that will be the hoop for our floating row cover. So we're gonna put 12 of these hoops up and then we're gonna put our floating row cover over the hoops and I'll show you how we secure the ends and then we'll put some bricks or something along the sides to help hold it down. Yeah, maybe not. Okay. So. I'm gonna step on my end on one side. I think we're twisted, aren't we? How much space do you have over there? Quite a bit. I've got quite a bit also. I'm gonna tie a knot in my end. Okay. When we put the floating row covers on, what I like to do is tie a knot in the end of the floating row cover. Then when we put it over, what I do is I take one of our landscape staples like we use for the black plastic, and I put that right here and pound that in on that end, and that knot will help hold it tight to the ground. That way it makes almost like a, uh, what they call a caterpillar tunnel or a worm tunnel over the plants and you can then just lift it from the middle to look underneath it when you need to. It works out really well and it gives it some added strength on the ground. So I'll show you guys on this end what I'm talking about. I already did the other end, but basically what I've done is I've gathered the row cover up here. I've tied a knot in the end, and that way, move this rock that we already set on there. I can pull this tight and staple this to the ground, and that holds it nice and tight here at the end. And by having that knot in there, it has something for the staple to kind of grip onto and prevent from moving. The hardest part here in Missouri is finding a spot to do this without rocks. And then that holds that nice and tight. Now we'll go and we'll put rocks and things along the sides. These floating row covers are from Grower Solutions. You guys know we get a lot of our gardening supplies from them, our drip irrigation, our greenhouse. Uh, so if you want to check them out, these floating row covers are from Grower Solutions. And I can tell you guys that these things hold up to the weather. We've used this exact one for I think three or four years now in the greenhouse and outside. So they do hold up even in the high winds that we get here in Missouri. All right, we're gonna put some rocks along the edges of it, and then we can finally move on to getting some things in the ground. That part of the day is finished. We're excited to have that done and those protected from the insects. Now it's time to move on to planting, planting our summer garden in the ground. 
for 2023, it's an exciting day. Okay, on to planting, and we are gonna start with tomatoes. Now, all of the tomato plants that we absolutely need, we've already planted in the greenhouse, but we are gonna be planting one row of 28 tomato plants here in the outside garden. Um, and I have set aside several of my favorite paste tomato, Salvaterra Select. I think I have eight of them that will go in this row. And then we just have a variety of the other varieties that we took to the farmer's market that uh, we set aside, that we that some of them are just left over that didn't sell. And we're gonna be planting those in the garden as well. Uh, we'll be planting, along with the Salvaterra Select, we'll be planting a few uh, brandy wine, Cherokee Purple, classic beef steak. I see some Rutgers, Dad's Sunset, and there are my Salvatera Select. So that is the plan for the tomatoes. We're gonna to get started planting those. I'll make sure to bring you up close while I'm planting at least one, maybe two of the plants, uh, just to show you our method. Now, some of these plants, they're really tall, you can see, um, and they are looking like they desperately need to get into the ground, which they do. Uh, they're really kind of past their prime in these pots, okay? But they will do really well in the ground. Uh, we're just gonna pop off some of these lower branches, plant them deep, and as soon as they get into the ground and get some wonderful water and the warmth of the summer, they're gonna take off and just explode and do really well, Lord willing, anyway. So we're gonna get started with that and get all of these tomato plants planted. The way that we like to plant our tomatoes is with one of these augers that goes on the end of your drill. Basically, this will just drill our hole down into the ground. These come in several different sizes. We actually bought some a couple years ago that came with a few different sizes. We'll actually use different sizes depending on what we're planting, but for the tomatoes, we use this biggest one. So for these tomatoes, because these, like Sarah said, are getting really tall in these little pots, I'm gonna to try to get down as far as I can with this auger. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna really get too deep for these tomatoes that we're planting today. Um, we are working with a lot of rocky soil here, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to get down all the way on all of these, but we'll get down as far as we can. So basically, we're just going to take the auger, And we'll just drill each hole, at least, at least to here. If I can get down even further, I'll try to. So I'm gonna just go down. I'm gonna start drilling all the holes. Sarah will follow behind me, starting to put plants in as I'm drilling the holes. We're going to plant the very first tomato plant in our outside in-ground garden. We're starting with Salvaterra Select. Now, planting tomato plants isn't very difficult. We're just gonna take it out of the pot. These are a little bit root bound, so I am going to tickle the roots to encourage them to grow outside of the form of the little pot that they were in. Now we have these wonderful deep holes that Kevin plant or that Kevin drilled for me. I'm going to put one nice big handful of rabbit manure. This is dry rabbit manure from our rabbits. And I really think that this is one of the secrets, one of the keys to success with growing tomato plants. I'm going to put one large handful down at the bottom of that hole. I'm going to start picking off some of these leaves because we're gonna plant this pretty deep. 
One of the reasons why we plant these so deep is because all along this stem is going to grow roots. So there will be roots all the way down here inside of the soil, down in the soil, and it's gonna produce a really strong, healthy plant. So I might need to take off more. I'm gonna take off a couple more. I'm gonna put that down in the hole. And then I'm just gonna backfill with the native soil. I just want to point out to you guys, the soil that we're working with here on our new homestead is a lot different than the soil we had at our original homestead here in Missouri. We had the original homestead, then we bought this property about three years later. We moved on to this property last fall. Now, the properties aren't that far away from each other but the soil is completely different. Here, gardening is kind of like growing tomatoes in your gravel driveway. The soil is just a little bit difficult. Now, creating soil, amending soil, building soil in ground kind of like this, uh, it takes time. It's not gonna happen over one season or two seasons. It's going to have to happen over time. So. Last year, we did pretty well gardening. We did have a drought. We did have unseasonably hot weather and we did okay. We're trying it again. We're not giving up. Okay, so I have replaced all of the soil um, around here. Once these get a nice watering and feel the sun and the warmth of the weather, they will start growing more straight up. And when they get up to this trellis, we'll start attaching it to the trellis so that that'll grow straight up and it will support this plant. So that is how we plant tomatoes in a nutshell. We're just gonna continue on down the line until all 28 of the plants are planted in the ground. Well, the tomatoes are all in. That is a good part of the project done. We're gonna move on now. The rest of what we're gonna be planting in the garden is gonna be started from seed. And you might be surprised at some of the things that we're planting this year. In this row, this trellis is going to be used for decorative gourds, you guys. We're trying something new. We're doing something fun. We decided to get three different varieties of gourds and grow them on these trellises. Who knows, you guys, aside from these being decorations for us for this fall, maybe you'll see us again at the farmer's market. Maybe you'll see us at some other event selling gourds. You just never know. But this whole row is gonna be gourds. I also wanted to tell you that this year, we bought a lot of our seeds from MI Gardener in Michigan. Uh, they're a great company. They have all heirloom seeds and they're very affordable. Um, all of the gourds that we're gonna be planting here today and lots of the other seeds from this year were from MI Gardener. Now they do have a coupon code for you guys if you wanna start ordering from them. Uh, it is LTH10 and the link to their website is in the description of this video. Uh, check them out and make sure you get your discount. So in the gourd row, we are gonna be planting baby boo pumpkins, which are little white pumpkins, uh, cornucopia gourd mix, which is just a mix of all different kinds of cute types of uh, gourds. And then we're also going to be planting these Jack B. Little teeny orange pumpkins. It's just gonna be fun. I'm really excited about it. Now, one thing also before we get planting is that every year we got many people asking if we have like a list of all of the seeds and all the plants that we've planted in all of our gardens and in the greenhouse and stuff like that. This year, I am gonna compile all of that into a list and kind of a blog post on our new website in the resource section. So if you're interested in knowing or you can't remember or whatever, 
all the different varieties of plants that we have started and are growing in our gardens this year, check out our website, livingtraditionshomestead.com, in the resource section. Okay, we are going to get started planting this row of gourds. Gourds in general are just planted in the ground, about a half an inch into the ground. It's really pretty easy. So this year for green beans, I told you guys earlier that we're doing something a little bit different. In the past, we've always done what are called bush beans, which are beans that stay close to the ground. You have to kind of be on your hands and knees to pick them. And while we absolutely love them, we always do the contender beans. Um, we decided to try something different this year out here in the garden. We're still doing the contender beans in the greenhouse, but out here we decided this year to try a pole bean. A pole bean will grow on a trellis, which means you can be standing up to harvest them. Now, a lot of times it's hard to see the actual beans, green beans, against the green plants when you're harvesting. So, this year we decided to try something a little bit different in that regard as well, and we're trying what's called purple potted pole beans. They are a bean that is purple on the plant. Now, when you can them or when you cook them, they turn green. Uh, most beans do when you cook them. But they should be much easier to see on the plant because you're going to see a purple bean against the green leaves. So these are also available through MI Gardener. Again, they're called purple potted pole beans. You can see our row here. We've got holes burned in our fabric every six inches. And we're going to plant this 32 foot row of these purple potted pole beans. All right, you guys, we started planting our beans in this row. Now I'll tell you this year, we did not till the garden. So we didn't pull all the weed fabric up from last year and retill the soil. And because we have a lot of rock, like we showed you earlier, and a lot of clay, planting these beans is pretty hard. And really in the past, we've had problems with the little seedlings even being able to come up through the dirt. So I told you earlier that these augers come in different sizes. What I've decided to do and what's working pretty well, we've done about half the row already, is that I'm taking the auger here. This is the smallest one that I have. It fits perfectly in these holes for the beans. And I'm just loosening that soil up in that hole. And then Sarah's following behind me and being able to plant that little bean seed in that hole where the soil is now looser. And I think that's gonna give them a better chance. Once they germinate and those plants start to grow, they can, you know, they'll be able to be okay in this harder soil, but it's getting them to germinate that's the tough part. So, uh, by doing this, I think we're giving them the best chance of being able to germinate and get off to a good start. Next up is our row of okra and cucumbers. For years and years, I have grown the Clemson spineless okra. Now, I absolutely love okra. I love coming out and eating it just fresh out of the garden. I love it steamed with just some salt on it, deep fried, you name it, I love okra. And the Clemson Spineless is, you know, a tried and true variety, and I just absolutely love it. But this year, I'm not, I'm not planting any of it. And that's because I'm, I was on a quest over the winter to figure out some varieties that would ultimately do well in containers inside of the greenhouse. I've narrowed it down, and I'm trying three different varieties this year to see which one is going to work out the best. I have one planted inside of the greenhouse already. I ordered one that I'm gonna be planting here in the garden today. It's called Dwarf Green Long Pod. Uh, I've got just a handful of seeds. I ordered these from someone on Etsy, so I'm gonna be trying these. And then I've got another variety that, to tell you the truth, I don't remember the name of, but I planted those over at my parents' house so that we wouldn't have any cross-pollination. So I'm gonna see which one of those do best this year. Um, these I'm going to be planting here in the ground, but if they do well, I'm going to probably try them next year in the greenhouse in containers because they're supposed to stay shorter than the Clemson spineless, which get huge. So just like we did with the beans, I've already gone through and loosened the soil up with the auger. We're just going to plant these about a half inch deep. I've got 14 plants that I'm going to be planting here, and then the other half of this row is going to be cucumbers. Kevin's going to plant the okra while I plant the cucumbers. Now normally we plant the cucumber called market more. We love market more cucumbers and we are growing them in the greenhouse. This year we're trying a new variety. We were at Costco and picked up some small cucumbers that were really, really tasty and we looked into it and we think we figured out the variety that they grow to get those really tiny cucumbers for Costco. They're a burpless cucumber, they are small, 
thin skinned. The variety we think it is and that we're going to be trying this year is called Be It Alpha. They are also available on migardener.com. So if you're interested in trying them too, go ahead and check them out. So I'm going to be planting these about a half an inch in the soil as Kevin is planting the okra. All right, on to the final row of the garden. Now this back half of the garden, it's about uh, 24 feet wide. This is the section of the garden that over winter we showed you we put our chickens in, we added a bunch of manure and our compost piles and all kinds of stuff in here. We were letting the chickens scratch it around over the winter. And we were going to just let this whole section of the garden rest over this summer so we could plant in it next year. But at the last minute we did decide that we're gonna plant just one row of plants in this section this year. It's going to be our vining, like uh, watermelons and things like that. So there'll just be one row of plants. The rest of this will all still be resting, but it'll give us an opportunity to keep something on top of this ground cover over the summer. So we've decided to do kind of a mixed row of things here this year. We're doing um, two types of pumpkins. We're doing jack-o'-lantern pumpkin to kind of go along with the gourds that we're growing. We're also doing uh, Long Island Cheese Pumpkin, which is a white pumpkin. Uh, we're doing uh, Crimson Sweet Watermelon, which is something different for us this year. Normally, I like to grow a watermelon that's called Strawberry Watermelon. That's my absolute favorite, but a lot of you have rec recommended the Crimson Sweet, so this year we're gonna give that a try. Those are all available from MI Gardener as well. And then these are seeds that we saved ourselves from last year. These are from our, these are the Canada crookneck squash. These are a butternut squash uh, that are a little bit bigger than a standard butternut squash. They store really well. And the reason that we really love these is because they're pretty much resistant to the squash bugs. So we always grow some of these. We'll be growing about three or four plants of these this year. All right, we're gonna get this final row done. And then the only thing to do after that is to set up our electric fence and we will be done with our garden for this part of the season. Well, it took us the entire day, but you guys, we got the garden completely planted. Took us about seven hours from start to finish everything that we showed you today. It was uh, hot and we're exhausted and hungry and ready to be out of the heat for a while. So you guys, that's where we're gonna wrap up today's video. It's always a little underwhelming when you sure first plant is. a garden because <laughs> you spend all this time and it basically looks the same as yeah. when you started. But I know with the warm weather and great water that's gonna be coming for this garden in no time, it's gonna be so green and lush and we just can't wait to start harvesting from the garden. I can't wait to see it in a month, in two months, in three months. Hopefully I'll just be swimming in produce to be preserving in the house real soon. So you guys, thank you so much for stopping by today. Don't forget that is always the best way you can help us here on our channel is just by sharing our videos on all of your social media. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you have enjoyed this video. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.